If you're not familiar with variance and how it relates to card counting, just you wait. <laughs> you will become familiar with it at some point in your card counting journey. What is variance? How does it relate to us? What do you need to know? Let's spend a few minutes and get into that right now. First off, what is variance? The easiest way to think about it is a coin flip. If we have a coin and you're gonna flip it, the odds are 50-50. 50% heads, 50% tails. Now think about if you flip that coin 10 times, the odds are five heads, five tails. But if you took a coin right now and flipped it 10 times, there's a good chance you're not gonna get five heads and five tails. Now take that same analogy, multiply it out times a million, and that's what card counting feels like. The variance can be all over the map. You know your EV, but your wins and losses are gonna be much more dramatic than that EV. So just like with the coin flip, the odds are 50-50, whether you're getting lots of heads or lots of tails, every flip of the coin remains 50-50 because every flip is an independent event. Well, it's similar with card counting. You might have a one, maybe 2% advantage, and that advantage, your EV never changes. If you're losing, you have the same edge and the same EV. If you're winning, still same edge, same EV, regardless of the short-term results because every shoe of blackjack is an independent event. But as we play, we will experience all sorts of swings while counting cards, and that is just the variance working itself out. And it can take dozens or hundreds of hours for all the variance to work out. The reality is that is the math of the game, Early on in my card can career, if I had a losing day, I thought, oh, if I would have just not played that day, then I'd have $1,000 more money or whatever it was. What I didn't understand is losses are the math working out in the same way wins are the math working out. It's just gonna take a large sample size for all of it to work out. Like I said, hundreds of hours for every swing to counterbalance each other and be left with your EV. What does that mean for us as card carriers? Well, the first thing is you can't avoid it. And the story I always think of when I think of this is someone that was on the church team, the larger team that I ran for a while, there's a player on our team that said, Colin, I figured out a way to avoid all the negative variants. What I do is I go into the casino and I count cards until I'm having a little bit of a winning streak. Then I stop playing, go out to my car, and play blackjack on my phone on an app for a while until I have all the negative variants. And it doesn't work like that. You can't trick the math into only having your winning sessions in a real casino. You can't trick the math into quitting while you're ahead because the cards have no memory. In the same way, you can't trick a coin into only flipping heads or only flipping tails. The reality is every shoe you play is an independent event and over time, all those independent events are gonna have anything you can imagine. Whatever you think you can imagine with card counting, it feels like you can have more than it. If you talk to a pro, they'll say, oh yeah, I never thought I could have a losing streak like that, a winning streak like that. So you can't avoid it, you have to accept it. So while you can't avoid variance, the second thing is you can overcome it. Winning yesterday, losing yesterday has no impact on what's gonna to happen today. Winning or losing the last shoe has no impact on what's gonna happen the next shoe. Winning or losing the last month has no impact on whether you're gonna win or lose the next month. However, every session you play, every shoe you play, every month you play, you are building towards the long run. And the reality is, as that sample size gets large enough, the law of large numbers will win and the math will work out. But just like a coin flip, the more you flip that coin, it is going to build towards 50-50 as you keep flipping. At some point, it's going to approach 50-50. It's the same with blackjack. We as card cameras, we have an edge. We have a real EV. And the more we play, it'll approach that. And the best explanation I've heard comes from James Grosjean. He's one of the most brilliant, successful advantage players out there. And the way he defines it is that do happens in the denominator. So you could say, oh, I'm due. Well, you are due for it to work out, but it's as the number of hours you play increases, do is going to work out. The third thing I want you to know as a card counter is to be careful not to blame losses on variance. Now, it is very possible that a losing streak is because of negative variance. It might be, but it also might not be. 
When I first got into card counting, I read this book by Ian Anderson called Burning the Tables in Las Vegas. This book had a big impact on me. And in this book, he talks about this really bad losing streak. And this guy was a pro's pro. He'd made money as a professional card counter for many years, but at some point he had this horrific losing streak where for you know a couple hundred hours he's he's losing. Maybe it was more than a couple hundred, I can't remember exactly. But rather than simply saying, oh, it's just bad luck, what does this guy do, this guy that's had all this success? He found another card counter and said, hey, I want you to test me. I want you to deal to me and I wanna make sure that I'm playing properly. As the story goes, he had the guy test him, he played properly, passed this evaluation, went back out there with confidence and continued playing, he got through the losing streak. But the thing that really impressed me was his humility and his willingness to not simply say, oh, I must be losing because of variance. He wanted to make sure the only reason he could be losing was because of negative variance. And that impacted our teams to the point where we implemented regular checkouts to say, look, you could be winning and maybe you're not winning as much as you should be because your game's not perfect. You could be losing. Let's find out where your game is at. Let's test you every month or whatever it was. The fourth thing I want card carriers to know is that we use betting software to manage our risk and to minimize the long run. Knowing car counting is worthless if you aren't betting properly, managing your risk properly, and potentially resizing your betting on a losing streak. Every pro I know decreases their betting if they're on a losing streak so that they can keep their risk continually low. Beyond that, we can use game selection to choose games that are gonna fit with both our goals for the long run that we're comfortable with, as well as knowing, hey, how's this gonna impact my edge and decrease the long run? There are certain rules like surrender or really good deck penetration that are going to make the long run a lot shorter. There's always gonna be variance in the short term, but we can arm ourselves with the right information so that we can make the game of blackjack as card counters less of a gamble in the long run. So the N0 section of our ProBank software is where you can compare both game selection and bet spreads to try to minimize how many hours it's gonna to take to overcome the variance of the game. We have an entire video on N0 in the video course, so you can watch that if you want a deep dive into how that works and what that means and how you can use it to your advantage. And if you really want a deep dive into understanding variants, there's an awesome post uh, on the BJA forum by Snarky Sparky called The Variance Monster. You can read that and, and it really helps explain the variance of this game so that you know what you're getting into and so that you can really minimize it if you need to. If you're a gambler who thinks that you're a winning player because you happened to win last week, you're not, it's just variance. And if you're a card counter, I know your emotions are wrapped up in your bankroll and every session, but you have to have faith. The math will work out in time. I like to tell people control what you can control, which is the quality of your game, your bankroll, and your emotions. I know variance can be brutal, but keep heart. If your game is good, if you keep your emotions in check and you manage that bankroll, you will slay this beast in time. 